who has watched a video or two on this channel will know one or two things. One, I really like shotguns, but two, I really like pistols. I'm not even sure why. I fired handguns in real life a bunch of times, but I've never really went out and bought one because it just, I don't know, just hasn't really been my thing. But if there's a good pistol in a video game like the P250 in Rust or the Magnum from Halo, uh, yeah, I'm all over that. And man, even Call of Duty, like Black Ops 2, that had some really, really good pistols. And it's hard to find that kind of thing in video games. And I just like pistols. They're small, easily pointable, concealable, all this fun stuff that pistols can do. And even if you play like Blacklight Retribution, they have a variety of things they can, you can put whole new receivers and barrels and stocks and stuff on them. It's crazy. Nerf, uh, well, they're useful for a couple of things. Honestly, they're some of the hardest hitting blasters you can get because they're front loading and they're really, you know, you can put a lot of power into them. It's a really simple mechanic and most people take this and scale it up into things like plus bows and pump snaps and stuff like that. But when it comes to things like this, it's like this Halo M6 pistol from Boomco is like one of the more powerful blasters I own. And on top of that, it's accurate as all heck. I never really want to use anything besides this. In fact, I'd rather use this as my sniper rifle and switch to something else when somebody catches me reloading. If you wanted something like that in Nerf, you did have options if you wanted to use standard foam darts. But what if I were to tell you there's an option that out of the box, with no modification, will hit like 120, 130 FPS? Well, that's where Tag Back comes in, the show where every week we take a look at a blaster from the past to see what it could offer us today in the present. And this time, it's a semi-unpopular, rare-ish thrift store find that some of you may have seen in the past, but it's kind of an NIC legend. And even, well, this one I didn't really know was anything until Bobo Bob told me what it is. And on top of that, he offered to send me one for the cost of shipping. So thank you very much, Bobo Bob. You are forever a hero in my heart. And you've probably been one of the biggest like people that comes to helping tag back do its thing. Regardless, we are taking a look at the Predator PR-1200. And you know, since it's called a Predator, you know it means business. And yes, I'm going to keep my finger on the trigger. It's a toy gun and it's unloaded, get off your backs. This thing is amazing. I didn't know what to expect when I got this. It looks kind of goofy. It's very, very large. And of course it's meant to have two little like tubes that are meant to hold like paintballs, but I took those off and I threw them away and then I was gonna cut these things off and then I realized I hadn't done a tag back on it. So I kind of shot myself in the foot both directions that time. But the PR Predator 1200, whatever you want to call it, it's a scaled up big brethren of the Wipeout pistol, which is something some early people on my channel might recognize as something I made shoot Boomco rounds and made it shoot them very, very fur. However, the reason why you don't see this thing around anymore, and I do have it in boxes over there, is because after that video, before I even had a chance to go take it to a war, I opened it up to relube the plunger tube and it never shot the same ever again. I redid the barrel, I redid the plunger. I, I could not figure out why it would never shoot again. And then I got a second one and I did the same modification and didn't get any, I don't know, the only living, breathing specimen of that thing ever shooting the way it did was the video I put up and my memories of it literally shooting across the entire house and the dart not even dropping down. And thankfully we have the halo pistol, but I've always wondered what shot better. This thing, making this shoot Boomco might be a little bit overkill. Yeah, it's meant to shoot a paintball, obviously. It had two little tubes here on the side that would click down into like this bottom piece to be parallel kind of with the barrel. And then it would tip upwards. There's another mark right here where it would clip in. And that would kind of let it gravely, gravity feed into the pistol itself. I'm guessing it couldn't feed from both sides. So you have like a storage position and then a feeding position. And then instead of having to reload a whole new thing, you just pop the other one, pop one down and pop the other one up. And it would feed into this chamber, which if I press prime the pistol back, it kind of opens up the chamber and pops a ball in there. And then when you pull it down, the breech closes around the ball and it fires. But of course it shot 50 caliber paintballs, which happens to be the same of the Nerf variety. So if you pop a foam dart in here, and we will, as soon as I find one, where the heck is my foam darts? Aha! Brand new Rebel dart. Kind of just falls in there, but if you take a ramrod, or in this case, a screwdriver, and you push the sucker in there. It doesn't go very far or anything, but it does go in there. Let's uh, not ruin the tip. 
and you fire this thing. We'll fire it at that cardboard box, but my ear is still ringing. I just kind of picked this thing up and I decided to fire it <laughs> by ramrodding a barrel down there. A barrel? By ramrodding a dart into the barrel, thank you very much. And it hit like 127 FPS or something ridiculous like that. That's without an actual barrel or anything on this. I guarantee you, if you rebarrel this thing, it will break that cardboard box without even trying. And God help you if you use half-length darts. Again, this is completely without modification. This is the bigger brother, like I said, of the Wipeout Pistol. And it functions in pretty much the same way. And he bought it for the princely sum of $5 at a Savers. And it's probably one of the better pistols I own. I have brought this to a war, but because I never cut these things off, it's been a little weird. But, man, you put a brass breech on this thing, which I plan to do immediately after this video. So look forward to seeing this one again. It is going to bring whole new levels of pain as much as a foam dart could possibly go. The thing is, most wars are going to make you use a standard length foam dart and... Standard length foam darts don't like high velocity, then they kind of do this kind of thing. And if you're lucky, you can still hit somebody with it, and it feels like some kind of gun from Contra, where it spins around and still hits the target. They're really, really fun. The priming weight is ridiculously low because it has this lever-like system. And if you really wanted to, there is this kind of weird sight on the top of it. Of course, no rear posts or anything of that to speak of. But there is something you can kind of visualize your target on. And with how accurate foam darts are anyway, it's not going to matter a whole lot. And did I mention the grip is ridiculously comfy, even for my tiny hands? I mean, look at this thing. It's super, super, super thick and girthy, and yet feels right at home in my hand. Hmm. I like it a lot. Trigger pull is nice and crisp. And overall, the aesthetics, it looks pretty darn good. Now, to make this thing really shine, I'm gonna have to take off this black plastic and fill in those holes. But once that's done with the proper sliding breech, it's gonna be one heck of a wrecking house. You can probably even hopper this thing. In fact, I'm sure they've been done. This is not something brand new. This is something that has been in the hobby. I'm sure these have showed up on the fields of NIC battle in the past. I know the Wipeout Pistol had, and the Wipeout Pistol actually came packaged with like chalk darts, which, I mean, I had a Wipeout Pistol. I shot darts out of it before I rebarreled it. It was impressive, but it wasn't anything near as strong as this. If you see one of these things when you're thrifting, I would go get it. Now, when I first got this a couple of months back when I had shorter hair, I uh, I put a video out on my, my Facebook, but I did look and they were still on Amazon for like 25 bucks or something like that. And I'm sure they'll come and go. Nowadays, if you want them, I, I couldn't find any on Amazon in the US. I did find some on Amazon in like the UK and they seem reasonably priced. And there are some other paintball stores that will still sell something like this because as all for, after all, it was a paintball marker. But uh, it's kind of harder to find them now if you're living in the US, unless you're looking like a paintball retailer online. I mean, you're, it's not gonna be unobtainium. Yeah, the, uh, the Predator PR1200, definitely a blaster I would look out for if you can find them. In fact, a lot of these 50 cal uh, paintball blasters can be used to fit standard foam darts. And they're absolutely a riot. They, you know, with it being a single front-loading action, yeah, that's not going to be good for everybody. But some people, depending on your loadout, you're going to want a single powerful shot, like a sniper rifle. And while snipers don't exactly exist in Nerf, especially if you're using stock-length darts, unless your war is absolutely mental, and we'll let you use a single Titan with... Buzz V stickies, I can vouch 100% that that is a sniper rifle. Uh, chances are you're just going to have a bad time. But if you just really want to go absolute nuts, maybe deal with the fact like even like stock, I don't have to monitor 120 FPS, 130. That's still very much controllable. I wouldn't worry so much about that thing spiraling out of control. You should, you could get some damage done with this thing. It goes without saying that you can't really use it too much with stickies or tagger darts, but it will work fine with just your typical foam darts. In fact, I had the best results when using the Dart Zone Super Darts, I believe they're called. They're very, very good in this thing. 
I can't wait to mod it. I'm glad I finally got this video down so I can do just that. Let me know what you think about the Predator PR1200 down in the comment boxes below. Do you think it's worth picking up? Do you want to see it a little more in action? Let me know because I do plan on modding this one right here. I'm Walcom S7. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I do hope to see you in an entirely different one.